More the Rich Podcast. Today we are here with Josh Thomas and his other partner didn't make it today, but Ana Gonzalez, the dynamic duo behind Anabots AI. They've been revolutionizing how businesses operate with AI and helping entrepreneurs reach new heights. We're going to dive into some deep conversations about human nature, AI, and the journey of entrepreneurship. So let's get comfy, grab a drink. Welcome to the show. Yeah. You know, I got to I got to tell you man, you got that late night radio DJ voice and it's jamming man. I'm I'm ready for you to, you know, put on some Yanni and we'll rock this out. That is funny. Never heard that one, but <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't can't judge myself, but I love it. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. So, more than rich. Uh you know, so it's that's a that's a really interesting name because a lot of us as entrepreneurs, the first goal we have is we want to be rich. And then we have to figure out, then like we've never, literally never asked that question before. Well, what is rich? Like, what is that even? <laughs> you know, is it like an amount of money? You know, is it like a pile of stuff? Does it, you know, and then, and then you define it. You're like, all right, this is rich. And then you get there and you're like, well, now what? <laughs> this wasn't that. as fun as I thought it would be. I feel that. And it's, for me, it's constantly a race to get a lot of different things done. I don't know. Like, I try to tell my friends, like, it's a closing door, in a sense. I'm trying to mm -hmm. trying to beat something. Although, it's hard to enjoy the moment when you're always racing, huh? <laughs> yeah. And unless you enjoy the fact that it's a race. You know, uh, I had a guy that that i work with his his name is michael mclean uh if you guys want to look him up really really interesting dude and he kind of uh, he kind of poo poos on the idea that it's not a sprint it's a marathon he says no it's a marathon and it's a sprint Damn. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you need to be doing both of them at the same time for sure and it's all terrain by the way <laughs> all terrain yeah and it's an iron man and you're wearing a rucksack with bricks and yeah, it's like if you can't not, swim, you're screwed. Pretty much, yeah, that's it. Super so, true. Yeah, and uh, for for me, it's always been about. Well, for a while, it was about how do I how do I scrape myself out of the the poverty that I was born into, and the the destiny that was set for me, and. I thought that the answer to that would be to go to college. And, uh, you know, I to mean, a certain extent. Yeah, yes. Ahead. No, still, I, I can still see how it can be useful just depending on your career choice. But, yeah, I think there's an indoctrination from an early age and an assumption that, you know, you keep going because you're a certain age when, in reality, maybe your brain, you're just not prepared for that at the moment. You could wait a little bit. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so college gave me a career i got a degree in music and uh, that's sick yeah a little yeah, small detail that out. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i got a that degree is not in your music. press kit sir oh well i gotta fix that all right, <laughs> yeah. all right. and uh, so i taught high school band for a while and that was cool um but i got burned out on it pretty quick and had to figure out what's the next thing and that's when i realized that I made a mistake, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't beat myself up too bad for it, but you ever, you ever have somebody ask uh, or talk about this idea of if I could go back to my younger self and give them one piece of yeah, advice, yeah. have you ever, have you ever thought about that? Absolutely. What, what advice would you give to your younger self? Like go back to graduation day, you're 18 years old. You got your gown on and you walk out of the whatever auditorium. What would you say if you bumped into yourself? Just all the hate is a compliment, but it's hard to see it. Mm. Dang. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's super discouraging, dude. When you're, when you're a teenager and people make fun of because I was making music as a teenager, right? But the mocking now that I'm older, I was like, dude, I was selling so many sh like records at a super young age so so much so that i pulled the music off streaming services but they were mocking me in the halls and i was like mm -hmm. oh this is a actual compliment as i'm older like they were you know teasing me but in a positive light like they weren't hating 
but I was just like, why is everyone mocking me all the time? You know, there's a, there's an, there's a reason behind that. And it's, it's, it's like this weird push and pull because humans, they, they don't necessarily want to see you lose. They just don't want to feel bad about the fact that they're not winning. And, and how, what's the best way to not feel so bad about me not winning? Just to laugh at Try them. Try to pull people down that are sure. winning. For You're sure. just like me. Don't forget where you came from. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And I think that's yeah. really just a reflection of them now I'm older, you know? It's like, oh, you're worried because you think you're not going to be something, you know? Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, for me, uh, and, and who knows how your life would have gone if you had gotten that advice. Who knows how different your life would have been right now? Maybe it would have been worse. And that's why we can't really True. dwell on mistakes in the past and everything. Because you never know, like, whatever happened to you could have, like, fortified you into the man you are that you are proud of. And, uh, but I always said to myself, if I was going to bump into myself in that, that fateful day after I'm walking out of high school, uh, I would look at myself and I would say, skip college go and find the most successful person that you can find offer to work for them <laughs> at any price even for free for as long as you can gary v, what's up i love it learn I love everything it. you can from key, that person the key what you're saying is education though because before you said this i was going to say it all comes down to like would you have given your younger self knowledge right like how much how do we give people knowledge at a younger age that they can actually benefit from especially with an education system that we have right and and that's a that's a great way to look at it how do we give knowledge and and that and it folds right into what i was saying like go and find the most successful person be around them model their behavior copy that shit like word for word if you have to yeah. until you can iterate it on your own independently. And, and dude, don't you feel like that about AI? Like having somebody shadow you or know how you're using it, you'd be like, oh man, another one of me is so intimidating and like deadly. <laughs> exactly. And that's how we learn. That's how we learn everything. It's how you learned how to walk. It's how you learn how to talk. It's how you learned how to How you raise your piano. kid, huh? You raise your own kid like a robot mm -hmm. almost. <laughs> yeah, you raise your kid just like your parents taught, taught you to raise kids by, by raising you. And it's hard to break that cycle, right? But, True. But, but we model behavior. And, and if we want to talk about AI for a minute. Unconsciously a of, too, by the way. That's right. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that we just, we pick it up. We, we want to mimic. We want to fit in. There's this psychological drive in our head. There's like chemical rewards for fitting into the masses because it increases your chances of survival. And it goes so deep that it made me think of, I saw a recent uh, movie scene where they cut out an older version of Lilo and Stitch and replaced a dryer with like some animated pizza box thing that they crawl into. And it's like, yeah, you think that we're not influenced at a very young age. They're trying to tell us, like, hey, that might not be safe. It might have a kid go into a dryer later. So might not want to do that. But <laughs> Don't just do that. for a child, though, you know, from seeing, from seeing something and wanting to, you know, replicate it, like you're saying. Yeah. And, and that's really how, if you, if you want to answer the question of how do we pass on knowledge to someone, show them how it's done. And if I can show you how something is done, then I'm passing on my knowledge of this to you. Now, you. now you know, you may not know how to do it, but you know how it's done. You know, if I, if I was able to see Babe Ruth swing a bat, I'd be like, that's how it's done. And all I would have to do is spend enough time watching Babe Ruth swing that bat and trying to swing, swing the bat like him, and then I'll know how to do it. He's passed that knowledge on to me. That's you're you're totally on the Gary V mindset of what are they going to do with it anyway, right? Like you give all your knowledge away for free and most of them just like you said, whether they can do anything or they will is up to them, but most of them aren't and I've noticed that too, right? You can only like I hate the, I hate the cliche quote lead the horse to water, 
but <laughs> that's yeah. where we're at with it. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And, and so uh, if there is somebody out there that is an entrepreneur or is an aspiring entrepreneur, I would give you the same advice I would give my 18 year old self. Go and find somebody that's already doing what you want to do and just do what they do. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Like the wheel's already been invented, man. Like no need to go and like sit in your dark basement and like, all right, I got this new innovative idea. Like just go and copy what already works, make some money, take care of yourself and then innovate. How do you feel about people that are like, yo, I spent so much time in college and so much money on education that they do feel like this knowledge should be, I don't want to say gay kept, but they don't feel inclined to share what they know. Right? Like uh, free, it, free information for somebody else might be seen as a handout to them, right? That's their problem. You know, just right back to what you said, like, I, I can give you all the information in the world. What you do with it is up to you. Uh, but if somebody's going to gatekeep, gatekeep, it's all right. If that's how you need to live your life, if that's your strategic business decision, no problem. I respect that. That's just not how I operate. And that may work for you or may work for some other person. That's the thing. Like, I don't have too much of an opinion on how people operate as long as it's something that works for them. I also think that comes with the willingness to work for free mindset and learn, right? You're not expecting anything more than, than that specifically. Like we're talking about monetary gains. Why would someone want to have an incentive to gatekeep, right? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get somebody's true intentions by their, by their willingness to work for free. You know, it says a lot about somebody I'm just trying to emphasize why you should, you know? Yeah, indeed. And uh, so uh, tell me, just so I understand, as far as the, the idea of more than rich, tell me some of, the, uh, some of the different philosophies that have come out of this. I'm just curious. Wow. <laughs> yeah, especially because every guest at the end of the episode, I ask them that. Um, it ranges, dude. Everything is obviously monetary is the last thing. It never, never is the answer. But it's all relationships, your net worth, who you care about, um, the things that you do. Yeah, just that's really hard to elaborate, even though everyone's answers are so freaking common. Like there's commonalities in all of them, but everybody just words it differently. Right. And it's interesting. Uh, I run a, a podcast called The Do Zone. Uh, and. I always ask the same question at the beginning of the podcast. Tell me something you believe is the key to getting things done that most people wouldn't think of. And I've asked that question more than 250 times. And it tells, it shows because as soon as I started, it was like, wow, it's automatic, you know. And what's interesting is you'll get a lot of the same type of answers. But there's all these different, like slightly different angles of each purpose yeah it's like depth you know like we're human beings you and i are having this conversation two other dudes like us have had a very very similar conversation probably many thousands of times but but not from this perspective that's really what makes us unique what makes us human you know i know we're getting way off topic here but... <laughs> well also just i knew this was going to be different when you were just kind of taking the lead in the interview as well right like i have questions here we haven't even gotten any of them we're just kind of chilling <laughs> ask me a question man <laughs> no i just it's like not, what i really good. love yeah what i really love about how you're you're opening up this idea like one thing that really stuck out to me was you said how do i pass on knowledge and like nobody's ever said that to me in a way that's like like i reacted to you when you said that I'm like oh yeah that's it you're passing on knowledge that's what it is for sure. And then I think the hardest part is monetizing from it, right? Because I can make a bunch of people do what I do tomorrow, but I also don't want to spend all my time doing it for nothing at the same time, right? Like, it's interesting. It's a, you got to balance somehow. But Indeed. Get, getting into that, this is a good yeah. seg segue, actually. Yeah. Custom built AI assistance. I really am curious how you're going to answer this, but how can AI assistance help musicians? close more deals or even increase streams? Is that possible? Yeah, that's a great question. So 
uh, first and foremost, there's, there's two different directions that you can go with AI. Uh, you can use AI to manage relationships, or you can use AI to manage content, right? So manage the things that you produce or the people that you interact with. You can do both. Uh, but what, what I would focus on as far as a musician using AI to kind of increase their relationships is how do we interact with our fans? Uh, if, if you've got followers and fans and people that enjoy you, that like you, it's very difficult for us on social media to be omnipresent and always on all the time. And so especially you mentioned that um, as you were growing up, you became very popular and, and you had a lot of success. With that success comes attention. And with that attention comes a desire for your fans to feel connected to you. And you just can't sit there and text them all back. But AI can. And AI can do it in your voice, in your style, 24-7. You can literally teach teach another at Joe Cat how to do exactly what you would say in this situation. And you don't even have to lie to your uh, fan about it. You can just say like, hey, go and talk to my AI. If you have a request for a new piece of music, go and ask my AI assistant and we'll put it in the queue. I was literally about to ask you, how do you feel about the backlash on that? Of people being like, it's not, but there's always going to be, an audience is that all you, is all you can you know what's the argument uh the backlash of what exactly you know people being like it's a robot no one's gonna want to talk to that <laughs> it's not you know, personal that, <laughs> that comes up all the time actually but you know the people that are saying it are the people that are thinking about using it and deciding that that's true <laughs> yeah that's a good ass point dude that's the whole argument of artists are fan of other artists just like the people arguing about using the tech are the ones that can benefit and use it the most. Yeah. And, and so as, as far as to answer that original part of your question, the people that are like, oh, I got to spend money and develop this. Now, people want to talk to people. They don't want to talk to robots. But actually, statistics will prove you wrong. Uh, there was a couple of statistics here where I, I think it was 73% of online consumers do not care if they're talking to a person or a machine or an orangutan the or whatever. End goal, end goal, huh? What they want is they want their question answered or they want their itch scratched. <laughs> if, if I can get my itch scratched, I don't care if it's a human or not. Shout out to Amazon. There you go. Right? <laughs> yeah. People want to talk to people. There are no people at Amazon. It's all robots. Like you literally <laughs> interact with no one ever. They got names, bro. Don't degrade them. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's that's a that's a great point. It's like, well, people want to act the, the the most valuable company in the world. You never interact with any human there. Yeah, and people are still arguing about it. That's what's funny, though. You yeah, know, the pushback. Yeah, and and so as long as as long as you're able to satisfy the need of a human with a robot, as long as it's done, what really matters is speed. Because if I'm a fan of your music and I reach out to you and I don't ever hear back from you, I'm not going to be like angry about it, but I'm like, oh man, I was hoping I could hear back. From you. It's awesome. but, if I re but if I reach out to you and I hear back from you in like nine seconds, <laughs> it's like, dang, Joe Cat's got it going on. Like, he Dude, cares that's about hilarious. me. Hilarious. A little, little too early for that, though, because with my urban development work, dude, <laughs> yeah, it's a little, little freaky how quick I can get things done. You know, I got to give things some time, schedule the emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and I get what you're saying. Like, I think it's dope. I think it's hella convenient. But people that don't use this tech yet are older people that have not aware like how is this this professional or this quick and you know it's very alarming i guess yeah and 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 it will be for a minute but uh here's the the other thing that i can share uh i've done all of this research and uh 24 years ago in this century in the year 2000 
there is a gigantic newspaper headline that says, Internet may be passing fad <laughs> as millions give up on it. I remember that. And that was this century, man. I mean, they're, trying to, like, they're trying to push that now with AI, that same sentiment. Yeah. And it happened again uh, several times. But the other time that it happened that was prominent was in the early 1900s. People were against automobiles. They're like, oh, my God, it's so dangerous. You know, <laughs> the wagon is perfect. Why do we why can't we just go everywhere? Why is why would anybody we love our hurry? horses? Yeah. How, who's going to take care of the horses? They're just going to be homeless. And then go back another 50 years in the 1870s. There are literally political propaganda cartoons that are hating on the light bulb. They're like, I don't know. Edison, people are questioning the utility of Edison's light bulb. Like, there's anytime there's an advance in technology, there's always going to be people that are skeptical, and that's natural. That's, that's our human defense mechanism. Like, I don't know, this new stuff, that could be bad. Man. It's totally normal. Making me think of how everything is about convenience all over again, you know? Mm -hmm. So does, is just convenience king? Is that what we're getting at with AI? Modern day, like it's going to be accepted because you're going to get left behind. Just like a new new iPhone came out in that sense. You're like the you're like the king of these one liner profound statements, man. I like I love that <laughs> convenience is king. Like, dang, that's exactly it. You go back, light bulb. Well, why would you know? What about the candle? My candle's great. You know, it's organic. You know, nah, the light bulb's more convenient. Automobiles more convenient. Internet's more convenient. Cell phones are more convenient. AI is more convenient. It's going to happen. And I'm not saying, hey, if you wait and see that you're wrong, but technology is advancing faster than it ever has so, in all of humanity. And you, not, gotta, you can't stop. Not to get political. Just hear me out, though. Uh-oh. Does this, does this push us towards socialism just because of the jobs that are going to be lost? Like, even if we can't create them, fast enough does that make people like oh god we need a universal basic income because there's going to be mass you know strife at some point is there like some pre preface i'm not a political guy um but here's what i'll say uh, there was certainly a push because robotics is not new that's been around for decades robots have been replacing people in factories for decades and there has not been like a societal collapse. And now AI is replacing commodity jobs. And there's way more people now than there were in like the 80s or whatever. And, and skewing with markets, we know, right? Mm -hmm. And is, is it going to cause this societal collapse to where people are just going to rely on, you know, universal basic income? I don't think so. For a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't think that it's ever going to get passed for whatever. It doesn't matter who's in office or whatever. It's just like it's too contentious. Like, I don't think that's ever going to get passed. Number two, we'll all figure out a way to get by, just like we did when robots replaced hundreds of thousands of jobs before. Now, AI is replacing jobs. But what it's really doing is it's only replacing a job that, that, you don't need a human for it anyway. Like you don't need a human, like no offense, but you don't need a human to Dangerous flip things, a burger. Huh? Yeah. You don't need a human to flip a burger and fill a bag and hand it out to you in a drive through. That's why there's like completely robotically run McDonald's and Wendy's. It's the, it's the, it's not even the tasks. It's the actual motions first. Right? Like I think I watched an interview on Altman talking about this, about it's not so much, the jobs, but the literal motions that we're talking mm -hmm. about, repetitiveness, tedious. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, though, because coming back to convenience, making our jobs easier, maybe will allow us to do more things like, you know, clean the restaurant better. <laughs> there you go. And that's the idea is uh, artificial intelligence is almost misnamed. Artificial intelligence, that phrase has actually Ooh. been around for more that's than a, 70 years. It's a good it was, perspective. I like this. It, it, was, it was first used in 1955. Government. And now what we really want to look at is augmented intelligence. And augmented intelligence, what that means is that 
we as humans are going to be more powerful, more efficient, faster, and more productive with the help of AI. And if, as long as we understand that, then my job's not going to get replaced with AI. I'm going to use AI to make my job more effective so that I can continue to be valuable. And that's the one thing that I want to, I want to draw a line in the sand on. And again, this is not a political statement, but if you are not willing to be valuable, then you're not going to have a job. If you're not willing to put forth effort and produce modern value, day. modern day, you won't, you won't have work because, you know, the meaningless, repetitive, redundant work, robots and AI are going to, they're going to take that job. And so people that use AI so that they can do higher level skills and tasks, those are the people, that's, that's the workforce of the future. And again, I wouldn't put all the asterisks I can. I don't want to get any hate mail. I'm not political at all. I'm just saying, if you want to rise above that, you're going to have to do some work. I work hard. I work like 16 hours a day right now. I get up and I bust ass and I'm not going to let myself be replaced by a robot. I'm going to rise above. That's what I'm going to do and use and because that's what I believe in. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. That's a good answer, dude. Um, zooming out just a little bit more, though, and we talked about knowledge and gatekeeping a little bit. What are your thoughts on companies? You know, I feel a little bit like they could pull back on its capabilities at some point and, and hold out, but maybe that's a little too daunting of a thought. <laughs> what's the, uh, sorry, what's the question? Just, you know, gatekeeping companies having like a potential AGI at that point, you know? Okay. Um, so here's, here's what I can say. Um, I, I think that companies and corporations are going to continue to consolidate just like they have over the past hundred years. And that power is going to get more and more centralized. And it's going to be more and more difficult for people who are outside of that ring to be able to get ahead without busting ass and innovating and, and making sure that they stay ahead of the pack. But here's the one thing that I can say. Most people won't do anything. Most people won't do anything. And so if you get up in the morning and you do something, you just won. You just beat 90% of the population. If you just get up and do something today, you're already in the 90th percentile. Now, if you want to thrive, you got to hustle. And if you're willing to hustle and get yourself up into that 95th percentile, like, you know, most people that get up and do something, they're not going to hustle. If you can get up and do something and hustle and work hard and not quit and keep pushing until you get to where you want, no matter what, no matter what it takes, no matter what it costs, you're going to be okay. Otherwise, it's going to get harder and harder and harder and harder for you to get ahead the longer you wait and, and the less that you do. It's a good answer, though. You're talking about all these little bubbles popping up and then getting swallowed by the bigger bubble, basically. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And, and the best way to avoid that is, you know, make sure your bubble, like, you know, runs somewhere <laughs> else and, like, starts popping its own bubbles, you know? Damn, that's a good one. Uh, how does AI personalize marketing campaigns for either different music genres, you know, art in general? What do you think? Yeah, so... Here's a, a different way of using AI uh, to create content, specifically to promote your product and your business. Uh, so we sometimes tend to think of AI as this uh, just content machine, like, hey, write me a Facebook post that I can share over here. Make me an image I can share on Instagram or whatever. Uh, we can use AI to create music at this point. You know, and I and I I'd love to hear what you think about that in a minute. But uh, but if you look at AI as again augmented intelligence, better inputs equals better outputs. You can make way better music than somebody who has no training and no experience because you're putting better inputs into this. Same thing with AI. If you know what you want to say then you can tell AI, I want to say this. Now, 
put it in the form of uh, a highly effective direct response marketing advertisement written by one of the great marketing uh, like uh, Claude, um, I forgot his like, yeah. That. That's funny though, it's a good one. Right, but the idea here is uh, if, if you know what you want to accomplish, have AI, chat GPT or whatever app you're using, have it be your guide. One, one way I could do that, for instance, is, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define its role. You are an executive for a, a high-level marketing firm that represents the music industry. I'm gonna, I want to write a social media post that has a potential of going viral. You need to ask me up to five questions to understand my point of view and my topic so that you can write this viral post that has a hook and you know the meat and a call to action. Go. And now, if you, you can do this in ChatGPT right now, now it's gonna say, great. And then it's gonna ask you whatever five questions it needs to ask you about your topic, your music, your background or something. And then it's gonna produce exactly what you told it to produce. But it's gonna be a thousand times better than if you said, hey, ChatGPT, Just make me an Instagram it. post about my latest <laughs> album yeah. drop. Yeah, no context. For sure. Better input, better output. Yeah, yeah. Asking questions, dude. And you know what's funny about that? How important is that just in real life? <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a good point. Like, uh, hey, what what's your what's your advice for me growing my business? Where are you at in your business right now? Yeah. What do you want to do with your business? What sets you apart it's, from somebody else? It's like I'm literally like walking to somebody and saying, make me a blank. Like, all right, you still have to tell me what the hell you want. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like make, make me a rap song, you know, like, <laughs> well, hang on, man. I don't even know what pain you're going through right now. Uh, How do we figure this out? Yeah, yeah. No beat, nothing. Just, yeah. Just no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah. one. Um, how can AI tools help an artist with no tech skills market their music effectively? I guess just kind of, we kind of went into that a little bit. The, well, the one thing I'll add to that, since you said no tech skills, you don't need to be tech savvy to use AI. It's not a requirement. In fact, that's one of the biggest myths out there. What you need to do is you need to be really good at what you do. If you're really good at what you do, AI will make you go Damn. faster. Damn. If you're not really good at what you do, AI will just magnify that For and sure. show everybody how bad you are. For sure. And yeah, no, it's, it's really good because it consolidates a lot of positions, right? You've seen, um, I've seen knockoffs where you can hire your own little personal AI assistants and they all have different jobs and positions. You can basically manage your own company with little, you know, AI employees. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, but uh, before you do that, <laughs> do you know how to hire a human employee? Do you know how to train and manage a human employee? Because if you don't, then your machine is going to be a mess, just like your human would be a mess. And so that's the thing is like, if you don't know how to do the job yourself, you can't hire somebody else to do it. Or let me take that back. If you don't know how the job needs to be executed, it's going to be impossible to hire a human. Same thing with an AI. Which... Which is where that quote, if you need something done right, do it yourself, comes from. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. sometimes people can't even convey what they're looking for properly. They don't even know until the end. And they're like, I forgot something. You know, there's a lot of things you miss out on. 90% of musicians, especially those that are trying to make a living, uh, uh, the, the thing that they need to be focusing on, aside from being a great musician, is the fundamentals of business. And if you understand the fundamentals of business, you're going to be successful. AI will help you go faster, but you have to understand those fundamentals of business. And so I would recommend you start there. Are your, are your economics solid? Uh, are, you, are you paying your bills? You know, are you, you know, nothing wrong with it, but are you still living in mom's basement? You know, like if those are things that you want to solve, AI won't solve those problems. You got to solve those problems. AI is just going to help you go a little bit faster. And, uh, and take a little bit of the burden off of you. But you got to know which direction you're going first. It'll definitely help you to create the ideas to get you out of those problems, you know? That's right. So, yeah, you don't have to feel 
completely stuck in that aspect because I definitely, I definitely use AI in that regard of, you know, like I have so many different projects that I'm working on that I'll just come back to the ones that are haven't touched in a while. Something hasn't been moving or forgot about this. or I learned some new skills so I can update that one. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. It, here's another way. Here's another way to look at it as far as the, the creative process. Uh, so, uh, if I were to ask you what your major influences were in in your what, how however you create your music, could you name off a, a couple of like ah well I'm really influenced by one two three. Yeah, immediately. King Los, Ace Hood, and then Money Man. All right, cool. So those those people like they kind of drive your inspiration and you don't necessarily copy their music but you're inspired by their music and so we draw as and as musicians we're continuously evolving that like if i'd have asked you that question 10 years ago it may not have been those same people for sure not. if i ask you 10 years from now it may be different people and, and so we're continu continually evolving from these different points of exposure that we have. Now, how does AI work? You can ask AI, uh, King, King Los, that was the first one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, name five artists that are similar to King Los. And there may be like two of them that pop on there that you've never heard of. Like, all right, go. I'm going to go check that guy out. Or you might say, all right, take the music of King Los, analyze the style, and feed me back like specific bullet points about the, the rhythmic patterns, the tempo, uh, the, the, the actual style of the music, or find the inspirations from this. And it's going to reveal insights to you that you probably never thought of. And then you can say, find me, uh, oh, it's, it's interesting that um, you know, all of his music is like a certain speed, like find me five other artists that have this kind of average beat, you know, and then it's going to expose you to more things. Yeah. I think I realized that 32 notes to quarter note, if you can switch your flow, pretty much it, it makes you the goat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> and so. And then if, if you can explain what that is to chat GPT or Claude or Gemini, if you can explain what you just said in a, in a way that the computer can understand. You can say, hey, find me more artists like this, dissect their songs and feed back to me what is the structure of a song that's going to be just as successful as that. And it will tell you because it has all of this information. As long as you teach it correctly, it'll be able to feed that back to you. And it'll help you make better music. That's hilarious because then you're making new ways of putting music together. Like you can literally make the instrumental around the acapella at that point, right? <laughs> That's right. That's funny. Yeah. You're, yeah, you can reverse engineer. Uh, how can AI match a musician's unique personality to their marketing? So uh, what we do to match personality is uh, so I just stick with ChatGPT most of the time because everybody's heard of it. But there are many others out there, but just stick with ChatGPT. You can take uh, a, a bunch of emails or uh, social media posts or articles that you've written, anything, or even videos that you've made. You can transcribe the videos and you feed it to ChatGPT and you say, I'm going to give you a bunch of content. I want you to analyze this content and provide back to me uh, the trends for the style, the tone, the voice, and the structure. Tell me how you assess these four areas. And it's going to tell you, well, you, you speak in a, a calm and direct tone. You have a, a jovial, witty style in your, uh, you use short sentences and et cetera, et cetera. Right? It's going to tell you that. And then what you can do now that you have these little kind of data points on how you write, how you communicate, now you can say, I am an author now. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a new song. Here was the inspiration for the song. Here's a little bit about the song. I want you to write a 250 word article using 
these parameters. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to write that article basically in your voice in a way. You can tweak it a little bit, but, but if you do that, you'd be surprised how authentic that, that comes back. And it's going to sound very similar to your other uh, pieces that you write. Interesting. And that was just from analyzing specifically, what were you saying that again? What part of just, that? Just uh, different things that you've written or said. Uh, like if you've got a bunch of videos where you've talked, you can transcribe those. Ah, uh, the transcribing guy. Yeah. If you've written a bunch of articles, you can just plug those in. If you've got a bunch of social media posts, you can plug those in. And it's going to analyze how you write, how you talk. And then it'll tell you. And then those are your kind of like your parameters for, for how you can create content like you. Yeah, eventually I'm hoping you can just drop links, drop entire videos, and you know it can grab the entire context as well, like where you're at, what you're looking like, your expressions. That's coming too. I anticipate. <laughs> That'll be yeah. Cool. There's some of that you can do now, but but yeah, like in 12 months it'll be really interesting. What's possible? Yikes. <laughs> yeah. uh, what impact does personalized AI marketing have on fan loyalty? Hmm. Interesting question. So. Uh, give me an example. Um, like, let's say you're someone bought something, so you immediately automatically send them something else automated in the mail. We got, you know, it's just an example. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's actually been around for a long time. Uh, there we're incorporating AI into it now, but, uh, automation and like sending somebody something that says, Hey, Bob, thanks for buying my album. Here's a t-shirt. You can actually accomplish that without AI. But what's happening now is we can start incorporating because there's so much data out there. If we know Bob's Instagram, we can go and crawl Bob's Instagram and say, Bob, thanks so much for buying my album. I know that you're really into puppies. And so here's a signed, yeah, here's a signed you know, picture of some puppies. You know, That's so good. That's a really good one. Dude, yeah. yes, because I've used this in my own outreach experiences where I'm like, I'll grab somebody's entire bio and I'm like, they reach out super sincerely like, and I'm like, oh, what did I say to them? What worked? And I'm like, oh, super, super detailed, personal like details that you wouldn't, you know, but that works. And mm-hmm. I've proven it works too from my own high ranking people, you know, getting back to emails. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. And so you can, for instance, you can say uh, to like, let's stick with ChatGPT. Here's, here's something that Bob posted on Instagram, write an email, like a thank you email that's personalized to him. And boom, it writes it out, copy paste. Because it feels like you at least took the time to go look at their interests and know who they are as a person, as opposed to being like, thanks for buying my thing, support my next whatever. Yeah. 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 Buy my shit. Yeah. That's a good point, dude. Um, practical AI strategies. What are some practical ways AI can help small labels with music marketing? Yeah, so just uh, coming coming back to a full circle here about all the different things that we've been talking about. Uh, you can use AI to create content kind of using the strategy that I mentioned to you. Create great, compelling content. And then you can use it to automate your communications. And so what we do is we build AI powered assistance via chat and voice. And so if you wanted to hand out a cell phone number and say, text me, uh, you could have your audience text you and you could program an AI chat to respond back and say, hey, thanks for reaching out. And, and we can ask it, tell it to ask certain questions like, what's your favorite song of mine? You know, who are some of the other artists you listen to? What would you like to see wow. from me next? Damn. So could, could we be having our own bots collecting data for our own artists in that aspect? Like, yeah, you're getting definitely. super specific information on your fans. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you want to, you want to talk to Joe Cat? Here's my number. Text me. And it's like, Hey, this is, this is Alex. Ooh. I'm, 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 I'm Joe Cat's uh, assistant. He wanted me to ask you a couple of questions real quick. And here's something that, mo- that could be really cool. And I just thought of this while we were talking about it is, hey, what's your favorite song? Appreciate that. You know, oh, who are some other artists that you exactly. like now? Exactly. Their answer to that question 
what opportunity does that create for you? Yeah, I know. I know, dude, for sure. Like whether that's with labels or, you know, you have, you have leverage at that point. You're starting to make leverage for yourself. Here's, a, here's something, right? If you got, you got 100 people communicate with you and they say that, you know, I listen to Lil Wayne or whatever, you know, now you, you can literally go to Lil Wayne or Lil Wayne's yeah, agent for touring, and say, for touring for sure. hey man, I got a hundred people that say they listen to me and they listen to you. Can we do something together? And I'm not saying he's got time for you, right? But, yeah. but it's like, it creates an opportunity for you to say, okay, cool. All my guys like Lil Wayne. I should Even probably figure out a way features, to do something with Wayne. Features, anything. Mm -hmm. Branding. That's a great point. Wow, super good. Yeah, immediately I was like, what would I ask? What would I want to know from everyone that's listening to my music? What's your favorite song? Why do you like that song? Is there a particular line that you like the most? You know, just all these little, yeah, that's super cool. How, you, how far you can actually take that concept of personalizing with your own, with your own audience. Assuming they opt into all that, of course. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, That's right. H2M content method. You want to elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, actually, I did already. Uh, human to machine. Um, what 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 we do is we talk about uh, we we show a way to use AI without ever having to type a single word, and it all has to do with I want to I can talk way easier than I can For type sure. or interact Absolutely. with the machine. And so if I wanted to, uh, for instance, your, your thing about the, uh, the music industry and how do I use it to promote, what would you want to say? Go and record it and just talk and you can get it transcribed in seconds. Take that transcription, feed it into ChatGPT and say, rewrite this. What am I trying as, to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah as a 250 word article about this topic. And that's the idea of the, the human to machine, right? And so I, I'm intimidated, I'm overwhelmed by using AI and machines and all that, great. But you got a cell phone and it's got a voice recorder. Just talk into your phone. So good, dude. Get it transcribed, let the machine do the rest. You never I even need, have I don't to even interact. do that. That's a super good point. Um, that's right. Thoughts on what is on your collar, by the way? Is that a microphone? Are you recording yeah, yeah, everything? Yeah, it's a lapel mic, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. I was like, are you AI transcribing as we speak? <laughs> no, no, not yet. <laughs> that's coming. But yeah, yeah, I can imagine that's, yeah, just elaborating on that. Every interaction of our day will eventually be able to be logged and documented, I would imagine. That's right. Like, like there's going to be a GPS. This is a location you're at. Here's who you were talking to, probably a little camera. You engaged with this person. Here's a dialogue summary the interaction mm -hmm. you know when i was younger i used to wish that there was a way this will probably be with vr or ar that there was a way you could identify somebody's interest in perhaps being approached like a dot above their head like yeah you can talk to me in public or i'm in a relationship don't approach me kind of thing yeah 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 i've thought about that i i think somebody was talking about that one time where you can just like you can just like tap it where it's like red or green or something. That would be cool. Yeah. And it's super good for social interactions, cohesion, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've turned mine off. Uh, what are some ways AI can create shareable music related content? I mean, obviously Sora is not launched yet, but do you anticipate animated music videos getting super cheap, for example? Um, yeah. You know, I think, I think as, 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 AI becomes more democratized, I think that it's, it's going to be cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Just like I remember when the, you know, I think I'm a little older than you, but I remember when the first Blu-ray player came out and it was like a thousand dollars. And no way. Yeah. And, and now you can get them at Walmart for like 29 Ten bucks. Or yeah. Something. yeah. And so like, as people adopt technology, the, the price will, will drop and, you know, ultimately it'll, it'll become free to a certain extent. Um, but, or like a subscription model, that's probably where most things are going long-term. Do you think, because I've been preaching this concept of people, maybe third world, not having technology, do you anticipate we can use literally just use the dirt from underneath us to, you know, build houses at that point? If we had, 
everybody educated like that if they knew what questions to ask like if you have no resources can ai be used to make something out of nothing yeah i mean you can you can ask like all right i'm in the i'm in the prairie in nigeria and i need to build a house and here's the materials that i have uh you can actually do that now and in some of some of them you can take a picture here's all the materials i have how do I build a house? Uh, here's all the food in my pantry. Make me a recipe. You can do that right now. So yeah, as long as they have an internet uh, connection, then that's possible. Super mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Can AI predict which songs will be hits before they're released? My prediction here is that they're just going to grab libraries of a bunch of AI songs and have artists go through them and be like, pick your favorite, re-record it. Who knows where it's going to go, man? Like, uh, can can it predict? A, I, I think to a certain extent, you know, the music industry decides what's going to be a hit and what's not. You know, like, Damn. there's no real science to it. It's, there's thousands of great musicians out there. And uh, there's, uh, of those great musicians, there's thousands of songs that they have that are 10 times better than the ones we hear. So... I don't think we even really have any control over that. That's a good point because I did see how I think it was like Bieber, Drake, another artist, about 30% of their actual catalog is actually hits out of hundreds of songs. I would say we don't have a lot of choice in that because somebody that is counting on um, that check coming in is making that decision, unfortunately. For sure. And elaborating more on like your experience on reading music, I assume you're educated in that aspect if you're teaching it um how do you think ai plays into that for music teachers like does it get easier or is it more challenging i i can say that i'm glad i'm no longer a teacher and i don't have to try and fight everybody having smartphones that are equipped with supercomputers that you can just ask for the answers to questions like i quit teaching the year after the iphone came out so it, I can't imagine how challenging it is to be in a, a teaching environment right now, Damn. battling the traditional way that we've learned things versus the way that things are going, which are throwing the traditional ways into the trash, <laughs> honestly. Damn, super good point. Um, in your press kit, it talks about always on appointments. Yeah, so that's uh, like we were talking about with your AI-powered chat. Uh, and what happens there is, you know, you got to go to bed. You got to go to your party. You got to go to dinner, lunch. You got to be in the studio. Meanwhile, your fans don't really care about any of that. They want to talk to you whenever they want to talk to you. And so if you have AI-powered chat, then that's always on. And uh, as far as appointments, if you've got a gig coming up, then you can communicate with your people at any time and say, hey, I got a gig. It's, it, it's at the, uh, the Halcyon Bar down the street. Um, it starts at 8 p.m. Are you going to be there? Can you invite some friends? Oh, cool. What's your, what's your Instagram? I'll make sure and tag you. You know, like you can kind of keep that conversation going, even if somebody's messaging you at 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Uh, and you can set it up on Instagram and in different places as well. And it'll be this natural conversation where it's just engaging people and saying, hey, I've got a, I've got a, a performance coming up and I really want you to be there. And I really would love it if you would talk about it on your Instagram for me. So one of the ways I'm trying to imagine it being adopted is it would be like real Josh has responded. You know what I mean? Like, is there a hope that you're actually reading them? You know, like, how do you get somebody to get on board with that? It seems really, like really far fetched right now. Why? Just because you're not really speaking to anybody. Like, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to ask is there really a demand for people wanting to talk to artists, even if it's not really them? I don't see why there wouldn't be. Uh, if there's a demand for people to talk to you, there's a demand for AI to represent you. And you don't have to be. That's a good point. That's a good point. You don't have to be inauthentic about it. You can clarify, 
hey, my, my is, official bot. <laughs> yeah, this is, you know, this is the AI assistant, but I can answer all your questions. Or you can obscure that if you want. Or you can give it a whole different identity and you could say, hey, I'm Bob or whatever. I always go with Bob. Do you have any uh, thoughts on digital avatars? Uh, in you mean like a, like a, a visual image that represents mm -hmm. you? Um, Does it even matter? Some people like that. You know, I I I feel like uh you know I got my I got my weird faux hog. I'm I'm good with my natural representation. But yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to represent themselves that way, I don't care. You want to be a cat? I don't. It's oh fine. no, I actually just really meant like. Would you have your digital self, like your replica of yourself communicating is what I really meant. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, there is some software that can do that called Hey Gen. I'm, I've been um, using it. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, it works for some people, you know, and it doesn't work for others. But I think that as it gets more sophisticated, people will, will be much more comfortable with it and they'll use it a lot more. But do you like that concept? Like, do you imagine it integrating with, you know, the actual digital aspects is not just going to be a chat. It's all going to be visual at some point. Probably in, in the next two years maximum, that will be prolific. Oh, snap. Okay. So good prediction there. Benefits of having an AI assistant manage a music tour. Have you thought of that one? Uh, yeah. So uh, that would be uh, your AI could reach out. You could, you could load it up with, um, 25 music venues and have it reach out to all 25 of those venues and, and engage in a conversation and the ones that that say yeah we have an opening and you know send us your demo or something then then you could automate most of that with ai and to where basically that's your manager um that's reaching out on your behalf and and engaging in all of those different conversations interesting um what about like automate scheduling promoting music events all ties in about the same yeah i think so yeah i mean it's the that's probably if if it requires manual labor or effort on your part then ai can do that job no problem especially if it's repetitive yeah i've been trying to tell people that people who are really using ai they don't even type and people can't grasp that aspect. I'm like, no, you don't get it. Like, you don't even have time because your brain's working so fast. Telling it what you need it to do, that typing takes too long. Do you agree with yeah. that notion? Yeah, well, it depends on how fast you type, but yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Got some competition here. Uh, how can AI help with coordinating album releases? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're asking a lot of great questions. And I, and I think that they, they all they all kind of come back into the same idea of if, if you need help creating content or you need help communicating with your people or with the adjacent people like your, your uh, concert venues and that sort of thing, then, then AI can definitely help and, uh, and delegate that. Got you. Um, feasibility of, you know, in AI music marketing. How feasible is AI for creating emotionally resonant marketing campaigns? And better inputs equal better outputs. So uh, if you can tell the AI what kind of emotion you want it to represent, then it'll do a great job. If you wait for AI to be emotional, that'll take a long time. It can mimic emotions, but you really got to guide it on that. But it is possible. Damn, that makes me also think about like actual, you know, iRobot scenarios coming in real life. Do you anticipate that in our lifetime? No, it's a side side question. Yes. So Tesla Tesla working on it is what you're trying to get at. Yes. Lord, not the answer I wanted. All right. Um, what new AI applications could revolutionize music marketing? I actually I try to be application agnostic and oh, really the reason for that is there's a bunch of cool stuff that works right now and it may not work in a year and they may come out with something new in a year but i like to go backwards instead of trying to run and keep up with the speed of evolution of ai 
I want to turn around. I want to go backwards and reinforce my position of, well, what is it I'm trying to accomplish? And whatever application is going to help me accomplish that, even if it's one that I build myself or if it's just going directly to open AI or Claude or whatever, that's what I'm going to stick with because there's always going to be some new shiny object. And if we try to keep up with all of them, we're just going to drive ourselves crazy. Yeah, you made me think it'll be treated like the way we treat businesses now, right? Like something, an AI popped up and it went away in the same aspect. Another business came up. Yeah. It's like, what kind of, what kind of pizza do you like? You know, um, for me, it's like the one that's in front of me when I'm hungry, <laughs> you know? The one that gets the job done. I feel that's that. right. How does AI help streamline communication between artists and fans? I know you talked about specifically texting and stuff. The only reason I'm asking this is because I had a conversation with Wendy Day and I was like trying to fight her against it saying, is there any other solutions besides email and text? Do you find that this is always going to be prevalent forever and that we just need to adopt it in, in terms of building a fan base? Aside from email and text and yeah. social media, yeah. DMs, uh, phone calls, uh, videos, uh, you know, Hey Jen is one, uh, holographic projections. Um, you know, there's all you. kinds of different ways to communicate. Um, it's just a matter of what's practical. You know, you got to think about how does a how does a typical consumer behave? Well, most people are glued to their phones all day, every day, and a text message or an email is is not foreign to them. So, you know, just stick with the basics. Uh, and if there's a reason for you to go beyond that, cool. I remember there was something like, uh, I don't know, like ten, fifteen years ago, and I think it was like a New Year's Eve or or maybe it was like a like an election night or something. And they had this holographic projection of will I am. Wow. And it was like, why? <laughs> like, why wow. would you do that? You know, it didn't make any sense at the time. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, why couldn't he just be there? <laughs> it's so weird. That's and so sometimes it's like, you don't need to, you don't need to, you know, use technology for the sake of using it. Just use it as a tool to help you communicate better with your fan base. Man, I had another question, but that was a good one on the Will I Am. You just made me lose it. <laughs> it's all good. Is there really ethics that we should consider when using AI-driven strategies as musicians? I think uh, uh, within the next couple of years, there are going to be laws passed that will dictate disclosures about uh, creative that is made using AI. And you're going to have to disclose this image was created with AI. This music used AI beats or something like that. I believe that that's coming. I just remembered what I, was, what I was going to say was, do you remember when U2 was forced to get on our, our phones? They just threw it on our phones automatically, like overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's what came to mind when I was like, any other solutions to texting and... <laughs> Yeah, they could force it down our throats. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you think our search for meaning influences the way we approach our work and relationships? Oh, man. You know, I, I think deep down inside, we're all trying to satisfy that, that little boy or that little girl that, that got left alone once and just felt like the world was crashing around us. And as adults, we are this big outer crust of that poor little kid that is still waiting to, to be picked up, you know, after school. And uh, like, that's pretty deep, but we're looking for ways our behaviors are driven by something that happened to us as children. And we're constantly just trying to overcome and protect that little kid from that one thing that happened and we're reliving that situation over and over and over again and it drives us to drink or it drives us to innovate or it drives us to be neurotic or be riddled with anxiety or to go be the you know the the president of the yacht club or whatever it is that you're driven to do that's what really it comes down to is what happened to you when you were a kid and 
how are you trying to cope with it and how are you recovering from it? So I think that's somewhat related to your question, but that's no, definitely what I believe. It's a good answer. Um, can you go into the books behind you a little bit? Talk about like influences? Yeah. So uh, I got three books behind me. One of them is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, one of them is called The Art of War by Sun Tzu. And the other one is called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. So Atomic Habits is the ultimate book on productivity. If you are not where you want to be right now, the first place that you need to look is your habits. What are you doing in your daily life and how regularly are you doing it? The Art of War is a book that was written thousands of years ago. Oh, by, pretty well known. Pretty well yeah. known book. Yeah. And uh, we can look at that as a, uh, a way to, uh, to understand how to run a business, or we can look at it as a way to understand how to navigate life. Uh, one, example, one example would be uh, the, I don't know, remember the exact quote, but the best way to win a battle is to have your enemy lay down their weapons before, uh, before the battle begins. And the idea here is it doesn't make any sense for you to go and fight. What you should do instead is you should find a way to create the advantage so that there's nothing to fight about. And speaking of fighting, never split the difference. Uh, Chris Voss was an FBI negotiator for a long time, and he's walking through all of the different things that he did. And he learned about psychology by being a hostage negotiator. Uh, and talking people off of ledges, talking drug dealers out of out of rooms where they had hostages, because the idea of negotiation, a lot of times we think, ah, oh, well, let's just split the difference. But when you're talking about a human being, which half of that human being do you want back? And you don't want to split the difference when you're talking about a person. This is a super and, good point. Yeah. And so those are those three books uh, mean a lot to me and they really drive who I am and how I operate. And so that's why I display them here on my wall. Is that, is that like a deeper way of saying like people are teetering on the edge so you have to like be careful with what you say? Yes, uh, they're teetering on the edge and you can either push them off or you can pull them towards you. And the idea is you want to pull them towards you because you don't want them to go off the edge. Uh, the quote, by the way, is the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. There you go. Thank you. But um, the never split the difference was that was, that was the one you were talking about with the. OK, that sounds most intriguing out of all three of them. Obviously, yeah. we know we can, you know, learn from our habits. But, you know, the experiences of hostage negotiation, that's nuts. Yeah, it's highly recommended. How do you think technology is changing our understanding what it means to be human? How so? I think that I'll, I'll echo something that I heard another AI guy say. We were on a conversation very recently. And because of the development of technology, because of AI, because of us being buried in our phones all the time, there's never been a greater need for us to be human. And there's never been a greater need for us to interact with other humans purposefully and intentionally that's something that is only going to grow as we get more and more isolated because technology creating that convenience that we Damn. were talking about earlier yeah. convenience comes at a cost you know i can wow. get a Our private sanity. taxi yeah i can get a private taxi for my burrito like that's convenience, dude. Like, I don't want to go to the, the Freebirds down the street and get a burrito. I can just have DoorDash deliver it for me. I, don't, I literally don't have to step outside. I don't even have to talk to the delivery driver. He just leaves it at the door. And so there's never been a greater need to be a human, especially because of AI. That's why it's augmented intelligence. It's no Super longer artificial. Gary V principles here. I'm loving it. Um, any like futurist predictions? Uh, there was a uh, Ray Kurzweil uh, is a famous futurist, mm -hmm. and he made a lot of predictions about technology 25 years ago that are all coming true. 
and he predicts sometime within the next five to 10 years that we're going to reach what's called the singularity. And the singularity is very simply the moment when humans and machines merge. And uh, he predicts that that's happening within the next decade. And I think he's probably right. Can you imagine if we just wake up one day and it's like, yeah, we got the world of singularity day. <laughs> yeah. Like who knows? Consci- consciousness is now in this. Is that the idea? Consciousness being in it? Uh, you know, uh, um, implantable chip, something like that. I mean, we are, we already have glasses that have AI on them and bone conduction to where like you can't even tell, but that's just a wearable. And like we're talking about actually merging with technology. I also think we don't give enough credit to the idea of AI is to speed up. So the research in itself, whether it's new creative ideas or solutions, like the actual research is being triple, double, quadruple timed to speed up the innovation. Is that not the goal of hiring people that are engineers in this field? There's incentive to bring this to market quickly too. everything. There's a race. That's right. Capitalism and progress. So, I mean, I know it's just super deep right here, but is there predictions when singularity is here? How do you even fathom that? You can't, right? Yeah, no idea. That's beyond my, that's, that's above my pay grade, (laughs) man. I just, I just like to read cool articles about it. I feel that. Yo, also another trend is that you said 250 words. What's up with that? Is that like a standard for reading of our attention span? <laughs> That's about five paragraphs, give or take. You know, most people can stomach that. I never thought of like, I just make it all my thoughts, <laughs> but you're probably right. Yeah, keep it, keep it succinct. Nobody wants to read your rant. They just want to read the summary of your rant. Two more questions. What do you believe is the most important question we can ask ourselves as individuals and as a society? What can I do to produce meaningful value? Even if it's creative stuff that fulfills you, right? That would still be value to society, even if it doesn't help others and it's just fulfilling to you, you're still contributing. You don't necessarily have to help others to be valuable. Uh, you, you really do need a purpose on this planet. Um, but uh, what can I do to produce meaningful value? If you never ad- interact with another human being and you never benefit another human being, that's fine. But what value, what value do you have here? You need to be able to answer that question. I didn't get to ask you like upbringing and stuff, but do you have any early memories with technology you'd like to get out? Like just what influence do you got you on the path of, you know, tech and AI? I'm actually, I've never been like a super tech savvy guy. I'm not an engineer. You know, like I told you, I'm a musician uh, by trade uh, and I've been building businesses and sales teams and stuff for the last 20 years. Uh, But what I saw with AI is uh, there's a lot of people out there talking about it, making a bunch of noise, and they're doing a terrible job of translating that to the, the regular person. Uh, 90% of us don't even understand what half of those guys are talking about. And so uh, I, I took a specific interest in that by realizing, well, my people, my clients, they're not resonating with that message. I need to, I need to share this message in a way that everybody can understand. And, and that, to me, when I, when I first started using some AI stuff you know, about a year and a half ago, that's where I realized like, it was overwhelming and intimidating for me. And I can only imagine somebody who's like less motivated, less inclined, that they would just stay away from it. Yeah. But if you stay away from it too long, man, it's going to pass you up. So, and so I'm trying to bridge you, that gap. Did you channel it into like excitement at some point? Is that what you did? I don't get too excited about too many things. <laughs> I, just, I just keep my head down and I go to work. That was such a freaking like Clint Eastwood answer. <laughs> Do you have any uh, last words on what it means to you to be more than rich? I'll go back to it's it's a it's a great ending point because I think this is where we started. More than rich because rich is first of all it's undefinable. And even if you could define it, it creates no satisfaction when you arrive and cross that line. So what does it mean to Damn. be more than rich? Damn. It means that I'll go back to the answer to that question that you 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 said, "Hey, what's the question?" What are you doing that produces 
meaningful value. If you can produce meaningful value, you're more than rich. <laughs> Another good answer. Damn. Love it. Anything you want to promote? Last words. How to find uh, you. Website. Social media. Give it to them. Yeah, for those of you who are interested in learning about AI and potentially using an AI-powered assistant in any particular way, if you run a business and you've got decent inbound volume, or if you want to interact with your audience or your crowd or your customers, you can learn more by going to anabots.ai and uh, we can help you out. You can talk to our online AI assistant. His name is John Connor, and he'll answer any of your questions. And um, if you want to talk to me, you can find me on social media at JT Literally. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and X, but I never check that. You also just made me think in the future, I think uh, music marketing is going to be like, let me go hire all these AI marketers that I know to work together on a campaign. That'll be the future of music marketing. So probably, yo, hopefully we'll stay in touch. I appreciate your time today. Yes, sir. More Than Rich, we are out. Mm -hmm.